last class we were discussing about uh, how to move from representation to presentation i'm going to introduce a detailed example to show you what are what are the main differences that you can meet in the in the story after i will give a more general class about that but today i am going very deep in the problem and here we are talking about the density we are in the cost in, in the context of sorry we are in the context of, of a scatter plot and uh, we have uh, we want to analyze uh, density data density and uh, we are formalizing the density in the two different spaces what i mean we have uh, an abstract space and the real space the abstract space is this one and it is about uh, representation you have you, you have your data you are just plotting your data using x and y as a, as coordinates and uh, we are considering the sample areas some squares and here the squares are measured in, in centimeter or whatever and uh, there is an infinite resolution here. You can plot how many points you want. And we talk about uh, represented density. How many items we have here? 50, 200, 1 million. It is possible everything here. Because in theory, yeah, you are, you are in, a, in an abstract space with infinite resolution. Instead, if you move uh, to the real space, the real space is done by pixel. And here, the atomic unit of information is the pixel itself. A, a pixel can be on or off. So the presented density, what the user perceive, is the number of pixels that are on. And this is a finite number, ranging from zero, no pixel is on, to P, all the pixels are on. And this is called the presented data. And uh, in a pixel, you can perceive it, you, you can have more than one data element, data element, meaning that we have collision, collision for rounding issues, for having the same value, it doesn't matter. So the point is, uh, here we have this uh, represented density, and here we have this presented density, and they are strongly different. This is a good example because you can perceive uh, you can understand quite well what is the difference we are talking about. And now we dealt with this problem. We have this problem that basically the presented density, because of collisions, is less than or equal to represented density. The number of pixels on are equal or less than the number of elements in the, in the sample area. And that, as a, we saw, can produce some, some miss of information. Here we have the real space. We have uh, sample areas in centimeters. And here there are the number of elements in, inside each square. And this is the distribution. We see, we count how many sample area have just one element inside, how many have two, three, and so on. And you see we, the maximum here is 56, and we have five sample area sharing that value. This is, instead is the real space. For the sake of the example, the sample area are very little, four by four pixel, meaning that you can have a density between zero and 15. 15 is the maximum. And uh, you can see that uh, here you have the distribution. We have a different distribution of, 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 of density, of presented density. And basically, we have a strong compression. All the densities between uh, 30 and 56 are just mapped on three different values. So you cannot distinguish them anymore. And here, there's an example. Here we have a density of 46 against 38. They are both of them are mapped on 15 and 15. They have saturated 
the sample area. You cannot distinguish them on the presented data. This is the problem. This is just one example of the problem that you have when you move from the presentation, to, sorry, to the representation to the presentation in a finite world. What we did to solve, to mitigate this problem? We have a model for a forecasting clutter. We discussed that last week. We formalized density as we discussed it right now. And after that, we think to the task. In this moment, in this, in this, in this uh, lecture, the, the focus is uh, on density differences. The task is present the user with the highest number of differences. In this way, you are hiding the intensity of the difference. A different task may be to preserve the magnitude of differences. Here, we are just thinking about showing to the user as many differences as possible. And, uh, and after that, we did some perceptual studies to refine our approach. And this is connected to the perceptual issue we discussed before, uh, the web is low, the just noticeable differences, and so on. We go through sampling. Sampling is a very simple means to dominate, to mitigate this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, here we have a, a data set with no sampling. And uh, if you make a decision to apply sampling, you, you can have uh, two situations. If the sampling is too weak, like here, you are, you are, you are presenting the user with 80% of the data. Basically, the crowded area is still crowded. And you perceive something more, but you didn't solve the problem. Or you can have a too strong sampling, like here. Here, the user is presented only with the 20% of the data. Now, some pattern emerges here, but we have totally destroyed the thin area, the, 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 the low density areas. So, <clears throat> this is a, a problem. And moreover, in some cases, I will, I will show you why, we need to increase the, the density. So, Basically, our solution is based on the idea of having a non-uniform sampling, meaning that we apply different proportion, different intensity of sampling in different sample areas. And we use also displacement. <clears throat> what is the displacement? Is to move a little bit a pixel, uh, sorry, to move a little bit a, a data uh, element to make it distinguishable on the screen, to avoid the collision. And, uh, we apply a different sampling for each sample area. And I will show you that we try to preserve the difference that exists in the initial space. And to design, we either decrease the represented density using sampling, or we increase the represented density through displacement with the goal of having as many differences as possible. <clears throat> what is the basic idea? Is to consider the, the range of density that are available in the infinity space on the pixel, on the screen. If we have a, a sample area, just for the example, four by four, we have 16 differences, 16 possible different densities. This is 0, 1, 2, till 15. And we want that the, the, the distribution, we try to move modify the distribution on the, on the data in a way that each density has the same number of sample areas. We, will, we should have a, a flat distribution. In this way, we, we will present the user with the highest number of differences, altering the intensity of the difference. So, and for each interval, for each value, we either sample or displace the data to represent this, this uh, flat density curve. I'll show you with an example. Yeah, there is the <coughs> presented density. 
that goes to one, two, three, till 15. And uh, we split the distribution of this density in 16 intervals. Each of them is going to contain 400 by 16, 25 sample areas. Because this isn't the total number of sample areas we have, it's 400. We are, remember, we are in infinite space. And uh, someone can complain, oh, but four by four is very little uh, sample area. I do agree. This is for the sake of the example. In reality, we use a, a, a larger sample areas, but the, the, the result does not change. The number of, of density is finite. And sooner or later, you will meet this problem. So we split the axis in a set of uh, sample areas with density one, set of density, sample area with density two, three, four, till 15. And uh, having the same number, we want having the same number of sample areas in, in each interval. That is not possible. We go for an approximation for that. And as you, <clears throat> let's consider this. All this sample area should have a density three as a target, but some of them have four, some of them has five, and some of them have six. And uh, to, to reach the goal, let's concentrate on these two. We do two different things. All of them, all the sample areas that have two, we leave them as they are because the target is two. All the sample areas that are three, for instance, we do some sample to, do, to reduce the density to two. If the density is already to two for some collision, like here, there are three elements, but we have, a, in, in this case, if we have two results, we do nothing. If we, all the points are on the same position and we cannot, on the same pixel, we cannot uh, distinguish it because we have only one, we do a displacement. We just move the, pool, the point away a little bit to have a, a target uh, <clears throat> density of two and so on. So basically we increase or decrease the number of, of pixels on through sampling to decrease them or to displacement to increase them. And uh, we show you what is the, the result of this. This is uh, <clears throat> the initial abstract space without sampling. We have 46, 38, we have 15 and 15. You can see that <clears throat> a wide range of densities is uh, on the interval between 30 and 36. And here, and this mapped only on, uh, on the interval 14, 16. And these two densities are hided from the user. The difference is hided to the user. If we apply the algorithm, you can see that the, the main difference is here. The <clears throat> presented density is more or less flat. Hmm? Our goal is to have it perfectly flat. It's not possible for a rounding issue. But basically, it's flat. And what happens is now the same range, 30, 50, 56, is now mapped in, in 10, 16, in a larger interval. So we lose less differences. We still lose something. This is not a perfect solution. And for instance, the 46 and 38 now are mapped in 15 and 12. And the user can distinguish them. This is the basic idea. And you, of course, you can move to a different situation in which we have a larger sample areas. But this is based only on numbers. A user perceived density using the, according to the Weber's law. You have the notion of just noticeable differences. And so we did some perceptual studies to refine our approach. And the question that we, we got that time was, uh, are numerical differences adequate? I'll show you an example. Here we have uh, 100 sample areas. They are eight by eight pixels. And the 97 of them contains 25 active pixels. Three of them contains 38 active pixels. So there is a huge difference between 25 to 38. And the question for you is which ones? Are you able to perceive the three denser areas? 
I can bet no, because this is below the threshold. I know the story. So the point is, even if our algorithm produces the difference between to save the difference 46, 38, mapping them on 15 and 12, it is likely that the user is not perceiving this difference because it, the increased number of pixel turned on is too little. Exactly as an example, we have three sample areas having 13 pixel turned on more and you are not able to distinguish them. So we started some user studies. We pioneered the idea of answering this question. What is the smallest difference in pixel between two sample areas that produce the perception of density difference? What is the increasing that we need to, to do that? The just notable, notable difference. And this is the, the, the one screenshot from the user study we did. We presented the user with the 100 sample areas, having 97 of them to the same density, and we call that the basis. And three of them were filled with an extra number of pixels, with the delta, giving rise to three denser areas. Here you can perceive them. You can easily see that these, these, these are denser than the rest. And we, we ask the user to recognize the three areas. As long as the difference between the base and the extra density um, areas decreases, when you are below the just notable difference, you are not able to perceive anymore the difference, exactly like here. And we experimented different bases with different deltas to assess how users respond to this task. And uh, iterating, we come up with these uh, results. Here, all the numbers are percentage because we, we were looking for some results that are independent from the size of the simple areas. So here we have the basis, 5%, 8%, 10%, and so on, filling the, the background, let's say, with the percentage of pixel. And this is the, the first increment we did. We did. For instance, we fill the, the simple areas with the 5% of the pixel. And we incremented the three areas with 70% of pixel more. Half of people recognize that. This is the percentage of people recognizing the difference. So 70 is too little, it's not okay. 90% of, incre of increment. In this case, 73% of people recognize the difference. 110% of increment. 89% of people recognize that, and so on. And then we considered the minimum delta as the quantity of, it, of the increment that guarantee a perception of density different of, of about 70%, meaning that the seven people out of 10 are able to recognize the difference. And this is the result. So to, to make two simple areas different, having the, the first one 5% of the pixel on, we have to increment that value of 87% and so on. And this is the curve of this, uh, uh, of this story. We have the base, the base in percentage from zero to 90%, meaning the, the, the sample area basically filled up. And here there is the percentage of the delta that, that we have to add to each base to make the user perceive it. So here we report the, the final result. This is the basic result. This is the points of this curve. Oh, there is something in the chat. Let me.
I missed the question because a oh, formal line to the user thought. Yes, we are lying <clears throat> in the sense that uh, we are distorting, if that, that is the meaning of the question, we are distorting the, let me get back to the, okay, we are distorting the, the intensity. When we are, when we are here, In this moment, we are distorting the information. The ratio between 46 and 38 is not the same between 15 and 12, meaning that here we have a difference, but the intensity of this difference is different from the original one. And this, is what, this was the task. We make the decision of preserving density differences neglecting the magnitude of such differences. We can have a totally different task, try to preserve the, that intensity. And this is a totally different task. Here, the, the, the idea is to present as many differences as possible. So in some sense, we are lying to the user because we are altering the data. But we will see in today and other classes that the distortion is a very good idea in some cases. So, back into this result. And uh, if you look to this number, I'd like to make this a little bit more concrete. Assume an eight by eight sample area having 64 pixels inside. And the 5% of that is three pixels. The 8% is five pixels. So now the base is, is expressed in pixel. That is a, um, more easy to understand. We have some area with three pixel, five, seven, six, sorry, 13, 19, and so on. And this is the increment that we got. The just noticeable difference. To make a, a sample area perceived as different, we have to add three pixels on this. The 87% 87 of the sample, or, or the basis meaning that the result would be a six pixel sample area. So you, you, you have a sample area with a three, a sample area with six, and you perceive the difference. 70% of human beings perceive the difference. And you can see that uh, as long as the number of pixels in the sample area increases, the just notable difference increases as well. Three pixels, four pixels, six pixels, seven pixels, exactly as a, the web store, web, web, web store, <clears throat> remember it. Here we have the example in grams. If you want to perceive something comparing 100 grams, you have to add five grams. You can distinguish 100 from by 105. But if you have 200, you have to add more grams to perceive the difference. This is the web store. And this is according to it, is, it is working. But here, after having seven, eight, we see something strange. The number of pixels needed to, in, to make the user perceive the difference is decreasing, six, four, three. Getting this uh, surprising result. If you have a, a sample area with three pixels, we need to add the three pixels to perceive a difference. If we have a sample area with 58 pixels, we have to add the same number of pixels. You are able to distinguish 58 by 61. This is, this is a perceptual study. So we are not discussing about the formulas. We are discussing about what a user perceived during the experiment. So this is somehow reverting the web slow. As long as the stimulus is increasing, the just noticeable difference is initially is increasing and is, it is in accord with the web slow. After that, it decreases. And this is surprising. And we had to think a little bit about that. Initially, we were not fine with that. And now, I want you to think a little bit. Here, we have a sample area with 19 pixels. Uh, 
And here we have a, a sample area with 27 pixels. We have the background black. We are turning white pixel on a background black. Here we are 19 pixel white. We have 27, 27 pixel white. And according to our result, this is the just noticeable difference. We have to, to add eight pixel from here to here to make the user, 70% of the user, to perceive the difference. And this is a perceptual story. This is somehow confirm you, you can easily perceive that the, here the, the white area is larger than, than, than here. How it is possible that the moving from 58, starting from 58, we just needed to add just three pixels. That is in accord with this story. Hmm? From 58, a, dif a, a different surprise with 61 is perceived as different. And I ask you, why? Try to think a little bit about that. The web is low, is still correct. What is the point here? We got an example of this story in the perceptual issue stories in the end. No ideas? Okay. Yeah, good point. The point is that we look at the black squares. This is the situation. When we have a 58 pixel turned on, most of the sample area is white. So we have a few pixels that are still inactive. If you turn three of them on, this is the situation, moving from 58 to 61, we perceive clearly the difference between them. Here we are comparing white with white. Here we are comparing black with black. And as a matter of fact, you see that the, the changing point, here we have a plateau. Hmm? Somehow here the, the just notable difference is stable, seven, 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 eight. 38 is more or less in the middle. 32 is the middle of 64. And after that, the, the number of pixels to turn on is going to decrease because people, when you have half, more or less half of the, of the sample area filled at the end, the white area is larger than the black one. So you switch your thinking, you move to consider, compare the black points. This is the, the story. And uh, if you remember this example, we saw a couple of weeks ago, you are not able to assess the difference between A and B if you compare the black part because they are big. But if you compare the white part, you are, you are thinking about the complement. And there is exactly the same point. And this is, this is nice because uh, this, this data is a data that we collected with the real experiment. Of course, it's not perfect because we did the data in, a, in, a, in, a, in our at home hmm, with the, uh, 20, 30 people, no more than that. But the results we got are quite interesting. And this reverse, reverting here is significant. Here we are stable more or less in this interval. And after we after a peak here, maybe this is also noise. Or moreover, here, here I am rounding hmm? the real number as digits here. So maybe we have some approximation. But in the end, we have a clear trend of decreasing. And this one is the same with this. And this is the reason. 
exactly this. All of that make, I think, very clear that moving from the representation to the presentation is not the trivial task. Yeah, we are discussing a lot just for a few, for, for a few pixels. People that look at a image don't think about pixels. But if you want to improve the quality of your presentation, you must deal with the story. And um, we did also an, an, an additional user study. We asked, the, does the distance matter? In the sense that if you have two sample areas, you can see here the white and white here. This is the, 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 the example. You are still, here you are still considering the white in this comparison. And we put the same sample areas at increasing in distance, close each other, far from each other, and still the user was, the user were able to perceive the difference. So the answer to this question was no. So the distance does not matter. What really matter is the number of pixels turned on, and we computed with the user study, the just notable difference for doing that. And according to the, our result, we make a decision to reduce further the number of presented densities. Having a 64 pixel, in theory, we have a 64 possible differences, but some of them cannot be perceived by the user. You can perceive the difference between a one and two, but you don't perceive the difference between two and three. You don't perceive the difference between four, five, six. Not, it is a nice gash in this. Hmm? As long as you go in the middle, there are a lot of densities, physical density, number of pixels turned on that are perceived the same from the user. It makes no sense to, to have this mapped on the screen. And in the end, we come up with the 14 density differences that we show the user. Exactly as we did, the, if you remember this color scale, or, or this one that is produced by Color Bureau. Instead of, of having high resolution color increasing, we, pref we go step by step in a way that the user can simply detect the difference, just a noticeable difference. From year to year, there is the minimum step. Also here, here the quality is not so, not so good. And the same is for this. So in the end, when we have a 64 pixel, we have only 14 plus 0, 15 different densities. And this has been built using exactly this scale, this curve. We started from the initial part and we see what is the interval that is confused by the user, giving rise to this. Be careful, I don't want that you do that unless you go to go to be a researcher in the InfoVis. This is an activity, a very low level activity. No, no, level, no low level very detailed activity. That is a typical activity of an InfoVis researcher. People that is work, the people that are working to improve the quality of images. And this is a, a very little contribution to the very, to a very wide uh, problem. And here we have uh, the result of our approach. This is the original visualization. Here, this is the clutter visualization. And you can see, for instance, the, that here, this and this cluster have been increased by displacement, making them more evident. And here, we, you can perceive something that is not evident here. We preserved this uh, thin area. You see a very few pixels here. It is, uh, very low density area is, is totally preserved, more or less. In this area, instead, has been digged a little bit. You can perceive a cluster here. You can perceive here 
more information, pieces of information, but still we don't go through this. We cannot solve the problem. We, miti we are mitigating. And um, think that uh, this uh, result is only obtained just uh, touching the pixels. We are not using colors. If, uh, if we add the color on the top of it, we can have a better result as well. We, I presented you this, this story in, in another class in which we use the color for mapping the density. Yeah, the problem is not mapping, is changing the density according, is not rendering the density through a color. The, the, yeah, the problem is to put the pixel in the best way we can to increase the number of differences. And after that, you can add the color to rescue somehow the intensity of the difference. I think that uh, you got the, the story. And if there is someone of you that is still worrying about uh, what are the three denser areas? They, yeah, they are, but you cannot easily perceive them. And this concludes this, this example. And um, again, it's not part of the basic stuff of visualization, but to me is is an, a really a nice example of what this is the best point of tourism about the story, this one. Make it very, very clear. This is the abstract space of the representation. This is the physical space of the representation. And in some cases, you have the screen size as a limit, the resolution of the pixel, the number of color you can perceive. You have perceptual and the physical limitation in time and space. And we start to discuss them right now. Just now I stopped my sharing.